Hi, my name is Ben and welcome to the How to Use Famitracker video series. This video series is focused as a broad overview of getting started with Famitracker and kind of familiar with how it works. Um, for starters, Famitracker is a Famicom or NES sound chip emulator, which um, basically just takes the sound of a Nintendo and um, allows you to create your own music with it. It's pretty cool that you can actually export these files to into a format that um, like a NES cartridge would be able to read. Um, when you look at Famitracker, there's kind of a lot going on all at once, but once you break it down into specific pieces, which is what this first video is for, it's a lot easier to understand. Um, a lot of people ask why use Famitracker and like a more rudimentary DAW like this over more modern DAWs like Ableton or FL Studio, and um, I think that's a very valid question. Uh, for the most part, I think it's just a change in workflow. It allows you to work on or in a very different environment, um, kind of divorced from the piano roll and a bunch of effects. You're kind of just stuck with what you have and you have to work with it. And I think that that works really well in a lot of cases. It allows you to create very intuitive solutions to creative problems. Um, and I know that chiptunes can be kind of polarizing, just like pixel art and video games, um, but it's just a different workflow and I think that it's good to have different workflows when you're making stuff. Um, you can download Famitracker from Famitracker.com and I'll have the link in the uh, description for this video below. Um, as far as I'm aware there's no Mac version yet but it can work in Windows emulation and boot camp so you have plenty of plenty of ways to get this to work. So when you first open Famitracker it looks like this. And there's a lot going on all at once here, but um, once we break it down into its components, it's really not that big of a deal. So the first part, actually before I mention that, the, it, it's important to know that you can hit F1 at any time to open the documentation. And this has a lot, a ton of information in it. I mean, this was written by the guys that made the program. So there's a, there's a bunch of information in there. And if you ever get stuck, feel free to look in here or um, the Famitracker community is pretty, um, pretty helpful as well. Um, so the first section you want to look at is this pattern editor right here, which is where you'll add all your notes, all your effects, all that, um, all that good stuff that actually outputs sound. There's five uh, channels with a default Famitracker project, the Pulse 1, Pulse 2, Triangle, Noise, and DPCM. These are all monophonic, meaning that they can only play one note at a time, so arpeggiation and controlling which chords you want to play at a time and which notes in those chords you want to play is very important. Um, <clears throat> Above that, you have your toolbar, and this has your standard toolbar stuff like new, open, save, cut, copy, paste, all this other stuff. Um, the, the big one I want to talk about right away is the play, and then the play and loop. So the play button will play through your entire project, and the play and loop will just loop this one pattern over and over. Um, you have your standard stop, and then the toggle edit mode, this red circle here, will turn on basically recording. Um, it'll allow you to in input notes. Right now, um, this is blue, but if I click this, it'll be red, and this will allow me to input notes. Otherwise, it's just in play mode. Um, the drop-down menu right here for this octave allows you to set the octave that your notes will be inputted as. Um, this is very important because there are some um, shortcuts on your keyboard that can change this to like 0 or 7. So if at any time you're trying to input notes and it's just not happening, like you're not hearing anything, I would um, change this to just double-check this to make sure it's set at 3. Uh, beyond that, the row highlight section um, allows you to change the row highlighting. So if you have an unconventional time signature or something like that, it will um, allow you to basically change this so it's a little bit easier for you to understand. The frame window here gives you kind of a zoomed out view of your entire project. Each row inside of the frame window is an entire pattern down in the pattern editor. So you can see how it would be easy to navigate through your entire song moving between rows up here, and it kind of gives you an overview of how your song uh, flows in general. In the song settings, um, you can change the speed of the project, which um, determines how quickly the song plays. However, this is more due to a hardware limitation within the Famicom rather than um, changing the beats per minute. Um, the Famicom rendered at a set frame rate, whoops, hit my mic there. Uh, the Famicom rendered at a set frame rate, um, and the audio had to go at a specific speed to match that. 
Um, so generally I don't edit this. You can find more information about it in the help documentation under interface, menus, and control panel. Um, the tempo is the beats per minute, and that one's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I generally keep this at a multiple of 30, which is what most um, old Famicom chiptune songs were. Um, and I think, again, that was due to the hardware limitations at the time. They didn't want uh, skipped audio frames, basically. Um, the number of rows in your project determines the number of rows down here. The default is 64, meaning you have four measures per pattern, but this can be edited up here if you wanted more or less. Although keep in mind the number of rows here also changes the number of rows in all patterns in your project. So changing this while you're halfway through a project can be pretty disastrous if you don't know what you're doing. So be very careful for that. But this is good if you want an unconventional time signature. This allows you to make sure your pattern is the correct length. Um, the frame number here changes the number of frames in your project. I've honestly never used this because there's so many other ways to add frames in your project. Um, but it's good to know um, if you need to add or remove frames. This is uh, one place you can do it. Within the edit settings, you can see the step number right here. And this, num this number determines how many steps your cursor moves when you hit an arrow button. I usually just leave this at one because I just use my mouse for big jumps. It's not that big of a deal. The key repetition is for if you're holding down a note key, whether or not it makes a bunch of notes or just one note. Um, I've never really used this, um, so I just leave it on. The song information allows you to just set general metadata for your project. Um, nothing, nothing big there. And then the big black box here allows you to edit your instruments. And these instruments allow you to create um, templates or presets for um, various sounds. Like you can create volume envelopes, you can create arpeggios, and you can change the pulse width of some channels. Um, this is very important because you don't want to clutter up your pattern editor with a bunch of effects that you can easily put inside your instrument. So there's kind of like it's kind of like presets. That's basically what it is. So it saves time when programming complex instruments with automation. So that's it for the first video. Um, next, I, I'll talk about creating an instrument and writing your first loop, which is kind of getting more into the meat of Famitracker and getting used to its interface. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me um, either through the YouTube comment section below or my Twitter account, which um, is above up there. Um, and I'd be happy to talk to you and answer any questions that you might have. Um, so yeah, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, um, give it a share, all that normal stuff. Subscribe if you want to see more of the stuff in the future because I'm definitely going to be creating a lot more educational content in the future as well. So that's all I have for now. See you in the next video. Thank you.